I think one of the main reasons the Closure concert came was it's directly involved with the AAC, the Economic Euro European Community. They've seen that um, there was an overproduction of steel within the community and they sent a directive to all the member states that they should be cut back on production. Um, Italy, Germany, France, Spain and of course the, uh, the England. But at the time uh, we had a um, Margaret Thatcher and the government itself had made its mind up that it was going to go along with the directive. What's more annoying is that the other member states didn't cut back on production and it was more annoying is at the time that the steelworks closed it was one of the most productive steelworks on tonnage per person than any other uh, steelworks in the country. And uh, there was uh, we made specialist steels which no other rolling mills or no other steel production plants could, could do. And that was a loss to the general, um, general steel production within the whole of the country. Uh, those, were, those skills and those special steels were no longer going to be made. And um, again, AEC just sat back and the government at the time ran down the steelworks and uh, we, we suffered through the consequences. Concert Steelworks avoided closure, even in difficult economic times. But in 1980, it was closed with a loss of 3,700 jobs, plus many more from the knock-on effect on ancillary industries. It was a devastating blow. The unemployment rate in Consett became double the national average. One of the biggest things was that there was a strike which lasted for 13 weeks. Bill Sears, who was the president of the uh, Steel Workers' Union, said that they would fight tooth and nail to keep the concert works open. Unfortunately, uh, they went along with the general strike and I think a lot of people knew that the death knell was coming and that they were on strike, knowing that they had no future. And in September that year, uh, 1980, the steelworks closed. And it, it must have been an awful situation that for that 13 weeks, a lot of money was lost through wages and uh, would never be uh, made back up. Bill Sears will have a strike, a national strike, for an improvement in wages, which coincided with the plan to close concert. Ah, oh, yes, a national strike. At the same time as they were going to fight the closure. The perfect example of an oxymoron you couldn't get. You couldn't make it up, could you? That was, that was the local manifestation of the big steel strike completely at odds with what was supposed to be the primary objective of saving the works. There was a lot of people protested against it, but I don't think whatever happened, they would ever have saved it. The big train was, was booked, full train from Durham. Yeah, I think I probably enjoyed it, going down Fleet Street and tackling these people and putting your arguments and your debates across to them. And uh, But whether I thought it would actually do any good, I don't think I did. I worried about the people who would be left behind on that. But for me personally, uh, it was the end of an era, I suppose. In one way, there was a sadness like that. We drew those, uh, you drew lots on the train to which MP you'd be. And, to, and amazingly, I drew Dennis Skinner. And um, Dennis said to me, you're a load of bloody rubbish. He says, get in occupied, shut the bloody gates, confiscate all the gear. He says, and, uh, even if you don't keep it open, you can sell all the gear. He says, it's worth a fortune. You know, this was Dennis. And I thought, by God, that would have gone down well with our shops. You and me, we would have done it. We, the electric, we would have done that. We, we would have seen that. I mean, I remember once being one of the very final meetings and the shops, electrician stewards, three of us were there with the other unions. And Mr. Mate came in, three days later he was at Middlesbrough, shifted, and he said, we have no plans to close concert. Well, he knew bloody well the had. He was, he, was moving, he was looking for a new house at Middlesbrough then. But you know, we have no plans to close concert and all the rest of it, and he was being shot. And I, I said, well, Mr. Mate, I said, you see, you have no plans to close it. I said, have you any plans to keep it open? The final straw came in the, in the campaign 
was when I could never get to the bottom of it. The rumour swept constant that British Steel Corporation have reached the end of the line. That's the terms. If you don't accept them now, they'll be withdrawn. You'll have to renegotiate inferior terms, or they might even be withdrawn and you'll be left to scrabble for whatever crumbs you might get. Well, that went wrong like wildfire. I, I found that bitter and sad. According to government publicity, the closure was part of Margaret Thatcher's Conservative government strategy to revitalise UK industry following the industrial action that had taken place in the UK in the 1970s. However, few in concert believed this, and the social impact of the decision was devastating. It ripped the heart out of the community, and was often characterised by many of the local people at the time as the murder of a town. The closure of the British Steelworks at Concert in 1980 marked the end of the Derwin Valley Steel Heritage, and prompted the decline of the town of Concert. I think when the steelworks closed, people got redundancies, which sweetened the blow for a short period. Some were very successful, retrained, did quite well. Others uh, didn't. I think every, everyone was shocked. It wasn't just the um, the steelworkers losing the job. A lot of the local suppliers, who were with, like service industries to the steelworks, they were losing um, revenue. They were having to lay people off, local shopkeepers, because of the people not having the finances behind them, they are seen that their takings were, were getting less. Um, a lot of the shops I can remember in Black Hill, Durban Street, Dunn Road, was a thriving community. Shop after shop closed down, and there's very few little shops in the Black Hill area now that, that are, are doing very well. A lot of the premises have been boarded up and been be changing into accommodation. On a weekend, the social life around concert um, will revolve around the pubs and clubs, the workmen's institutes. They were all feeling the pinch. When it still works first closed, uh, yeah, there was plenty of money around, but it wasn't going to last forever. People had to provide for the future, and um, there was a cushion, but that cushion wasn't going to last. And as time went on, money ran out. You could see the depression hitting further and further and the unemployment list going up. A lot of bitterness, a lot of anger. It, it, was, just a, it was just a totally gloomy bit of time it was. It was like a dark cloud had descended on the place and you could feel it everywhere. I mean, it wasn't so bad in our family. Not at first, but other people's families. Everybody. There was a lot of people I went to school with, they moved away. I never saw them again. I think that the sort of took comfort in the fact that everybody felt the same. Um, but it was it was doom and gloom. I mean, there was a lot of talk about them coming up and trying to sort out jobs for people and new businesses. A lot of people did try to do a lot of work, but I don't think there was really a great deal came of it. Um, the atmosphere was terrible. 
Um, and when when my dad, my dad lost his job at eight, and my dad started working away, and my dad worked away for most of my childhood, which it it was awful. The fact that he was never around. Um, he he worked abroad for a lot of years, and then was working around the country because there wasn't any joiner and jobs up here. I was sorry for the workmen. You know what I mean? They were. Money, you know, getting their notice and all that because I mean, there's nothing else for them really, you know. It, um, in fact, there was a few suicides at the time because people they just took it badly, you know, not being able to uh, to work. Men that had worked all their lives, you know, just lost, you know, didn't want to do themselves. But, um, it was really, you know, it was devastating in one way.